Welcome to the Kilter Texan and I uh, today I'm going to show you a new project I did for my Volkswagen ID4. I got this new mirror here. Um, one of the travesties I thought about the ID4 is that they didn't come with a home link mirror and uh, I was a little pissed about that. Uh, one of those features I, I just I really like having. Um, the mirror is pretty much uh, the stock mirror is just a regular auto dimming mirror. Well I found out uh, one place to say you can order this mirror it's a I believe it's a takeoff or a, uh, a replacement part for a 2017 Golf or something like that and apparently it all just hooks up and straightens in pretty good uh, I'll leave the part number below but essentially the uh, you know it's a new mirror it is a home link mirror so you can you know plug it in and and set it up to connect to all your your you know garage doors and gates and all that other stuff but there are the home link buttons down there and uh, it's got a compass actually in the face of it too so and the other thing is it's actually not quite rimless but you know it's it's a larger mirror it's got more glass so uh, I'm gonna use this toolkit here to install it and I think all I'm gonna need is probably these little you know this little spudger on the right hand side over here um, it's uh, that little, the metal spatula kind of thing over there on the right. Uh, I think that's all I'm going to need, but just in case I run into issues, I do have all these other tools over here, screwdriver bits and, and all that good stuff. And this is what I use to take apart iPhones and electronics and all that good stuff. But it's a pretty decent little kit for my fix it. Um, but uh, here is the mirror as it sits in the ID4. It's a pretty easy deal to pull down, and you'll see I, I kind of mess around a little bit, but there I am, you know, you could technically do this with your fingers, although my fingernails are pretty short, so I couldn't really get them in there. So what I used, I used that little iFixit metal spudger here, and you just want to get it into that little that little seam in between there, and when you do, it, it pops down pretty easy. If you'll notice there, you take one side, then just stick it in the other side, and it'll pop off there. And then just kind of lower it down and just lift it out of place there. Um, the front piece is a little bit more interesting, but essentially just kind of slide it forward almost down the glass, and it comes off really easy, and then just kind of wrap it around that mirror. Um, this is the part that got a little bit interesting. Every instruction I said said turn it counterclockwise. And you'll notice here, I dink around with this stupid thing for a while, trying to get this thing to turn counterclockwise. And I keep messing and keep messing, and I'm going to speed it up here because this was just annoying as all get out. So I keep hammering on it and hammering on it. And I looked at the mechanism on the other mirror. I'm thinking, okay, something's just not quite right. I'm, it, It's not wanting to go, and of course I don't want to put pressure on the mirror. But then I thought... Well, let's just try to take it the other way. And man, it popped off so easy, it was insane. And then, uh, so essentially what you do then is you pull that little plug out and be aware when that thing comes out, um, it will kind of roll over and flip and flop and snort like a dead snake. So uh, when you put the new mirror up in place, um, make sure you have it oriented right and don't force it. It'll go in the right way, only one way. So. Uh, I was looking at it thinking, man, did it, did it roll over? Am I upside down? Which way am I supposed to put this? So finally I get it in there, turned right side up and correct, and it pretty much just snaps right in there in place when it's actually lined up. And then you put it up in there, and it's a little interesting to get the fitment right, but you just get that mirror back up in place, and uh, then you turn it counterclockwise, and it locks in place. And, and you'll feel it when it locks in place, because... You know, it, it, uh, it, it'll basically, it'll, it'll lock in there and you won't be able to turn it any further counterclockwise. And it's, you know, it's really in there nice and solid. And uh, here I am, you know, kind of, you know, starting it, looking at it, making sure that the cables are up in place for when I put all the trim panels back on it. But uh, you notice that when the, the mirror is first plugged in, um, of course, you know, lights will work and that, that kind of stuff on it, but what you'll notice when you first uh, get it turned on is that C. 
If you look at that C, what that means is no, you're not heading in some newfangled direction. The C actually is telling you this, this mirror needs to be calibrated. It is a compass and it is an electronic compass, probably got some sort of magnetometer or something inside that compass or inside that mirror, but uh, it wants to be calibrated. Now you notice that this trim piece does not go on as easy as it came off the other side. That's because that mirror is actually a little bit larger and it's just large enough to make it interesting to get that thing off there. But if you'll notice, I'm also being an idiot and trying to put it on backwards. So if you put it on the right way, it goes on a little bit easier, but it, it is still uh, a little bit tighter around that mirror because it's larger. Now, I dink with this thing for a sec, but essentially you do this the same way, get it back up in place the same way, kind of put it up against the glass and slide it up against there and it just see it just popped right into place when it did that so up against the glass and just it goes right in place and then that last piece is what actually secures it all together and uh, just you know put the uh, the mirror stock right in that little indent and then just push it up into place and she will lock in there and it is good to go um, and if you notice that it still shows that C on there for calibration and I'll show you how to calibrate. Well, I'll tell you how to calibrate it. I'll show you the little drive that I did to do it. But essentially, if you got the chance, just drive around in circles and, uh, you know, for about 10 seconds or 15 seconds and it'll calibrate. But uh, here it is up in place and it looks better. The glass is just, it, it's a larger, less rim on the glass. And I'll put this other mirror up here. If you notice, it's just, it's just more glass and, it, and it's just prettier and it's a little bit different shape but um, it, that, it was really a nice mirror replacement I liked it so now I'm going to show you how I program it I've got a genie myself uh, well one of them is genie then I got a uh, like a lift master and then a, I don't remember what else but anyway um, this one genie deal is pretty easy but first thing I wanted to do was clear it out by hitting the two external uh, the two outermost buttons underneath the mirror and uh, let me zoom in and I'll show it uh, on how this actually works but essentially you hold them for 10 seconds and it clears the memory on the uh, on the deal and there it went then to program it afterwards what you do is you hold your old remote up against there you press and hold for like two seconds and you see it it reading and it's like oh okay there we go now I understand you know what remote I'm going to be using so uh, it recognizes that hey you know we've, we've got a good a good programming on the on the button so then you have to go inside and you hit the learn on well on this one on my genie and hit the learn button and then I got to go back to the car and when you go back to the car you basically just uh, sit down and you got to do it within 30 seconds but essentially you just hit the button and it learns the code and you hit the button one more time and shock amazing the garage door will do its thing and what that does is it, it puts an authentication code basically it uh, it's like a, it's a rolling block code but uh, it gets it to where it, it's uniquely paired with that particular button and then after that that's uh, oh, well at least that's how you code a genie to it maybe I'll do a lift master later and then here, I just take a short drive to calibrate the, uh, the compass in the mirror. And my intention was that I was going to drive over here to this one school and uh, just do a, I, I, I would say do donuts in the parking lot, but the ID4 uh, won't burn the tires so they wouldn't, you know, basically just drive in tight circles. Because the, uh, the ID4 does have an incredibly tight turning circle. But uh, essentially, I just hop through the neighborhood here and if you'll notice you know it's still showing C for calibration but uh, it's pretty quick just even driving normal you do want to make a couple of turns because those turns are what uh, what actually kind of give a little bit of differential to the magnetometer to figure out you know which way it's facing and and all that good stuff but uh, I'm just gonna leave this in real time to show you how long it took for the compass to actually calibrate itself um, it did not take long at all and it really was a fairly easy process to get this mirror in here i mean for for you know for all intents and purposes 
you know, it was a five minute install. It was a simple install. Uh, as long as you, I mean, you could probably even, instead of using that metal spudger like I did to get that thing out of there, you could probably use a credit card to slip in between the, uh, the seam there and open that up. Um, it's a really easy deal. And, uh, and then to, to pop that mirror off and to put it back in, really, it doesn't technically require any tools. Uh, again, I don't have fingernails very much at all, so I had to use the the spatula slash spudger type thing to, to get in there and, and pry her loose. Well, the nice thing is, is that this thing doesn't take very long at all to calibrate. Uh, and you'll see here in just a second, it'll start to flash really, really fast. And what that's telling you is it's about ready to switch over and get locked in. In fact, there it goes. And then you'll see it'll switch. And now it's quote calibrated and it'll continue a little bit maybe just uh, kind of lock in but uh, one of the neat thing or one of the ways that I knew that it was working was I could look down on the car play and see the navigation and in the top part of the navigation it'll show you which direction you're headed now the problem with this is with the it's hooked up to my iPhone and the iPhone has to work with differentiation because you never know which way the phone is sitting. I mean, it could be backwards, forwards, tipped up on its side, upside down, whatever. But what it does is as the phone moves, it actually takes a location and then it takes another location and does, you know, which direction you were headed between those locations. And it says, oh, I'm facing this way. And that's when it actually calibrates that direction. And you'll see how far behind it actually can get um, without you know forward movement because it needs that little bit of travel to differentiate between where it was and where it is now and what direction it took to get there but now that we've gone through our lesson on iPhones we can go ahead and talk about the mirror and it wasn't a cheap upgrade by any means it was about 200 bucks and maybe 219 once I got shipping and everything else and I got it from BAM VW parts or something like that Anyways, uh, part numbers in the front. You can search any VW dealer. It is a VW part number. So, uh, and I don't get any commission or nothing like that if you go somewhere or what else. It, it doesn't matter to me. Just want you all to be happy with what you got. So, make sure you subscribe for more. I am going to be doing some additional stuff with this ID4 that you might want to find out. It's going to be kind of fun. Uh, other than that, if you're going to crash, crash into that like button and subscribe for that additional content. And... Just letting you know, you need to keep the rubber side down and have fun.